Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Any Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out a fun little runner called Cy Road by developer Kenne. This is from the Cyberpunk Game Jam from roughly a year ago. It's one that I happened to pass over for whatever reason, never got around to covering it. Uh, but it was on my list in my little archive of things that I meant to get through. And I thought today would be a good day to give it a shot. Since I have a feeling this is going to be a fairly short episode, but I did want to at least give this a try. I'm obviously rather addicted to games that are sort of dexterity-driven, uh, demand very quick reaction times and such, and I think this one uh, definitely has some pretty polished things going on for it. Uh, for one, the visuals are pretty nice, the audio is pretty nice as well, and the gameplay concept by itself is a lot of fun as always. So... What are we going to be doing in Cy Road? Well, as you can see, I can wiggle the title screen around, so that's something. Uh, but we're going to be moving around our character here. There's a little dude floating on a cube, and we're going to avoid obstacles and collect diamonds. Uh, the game uh, narrator is actually teaching us that at the moment as we avoid these little, like, SD cards coming from both di uh, sides there. So the main thing that we're going to be doing is just trying to do our best to visualize where the tunnel is going to lead us and where we need to position our character to obviously avoid obstacles. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of nuance to the gameplay as far as like what's going to happen that's remotely you know, crazy, unique, or different. It's just kind of a fun formula that I enjoy pretty much every time I run into. And uh, I, I think this is, again, a good example that the colors here are very vibrant. The soundtrack, like I said, feels good. Uh, the game in general feels good to play. And I really love the fact that it kind of rewards you by giving you some more unique color palettes as you go. And this has already been now my best uh, attempt so far at staying alive in this, which is a little sad, because this isn't incredibly difficult or anything so far. I've just been pretty bad uh, in the past, and it's going very, very quickly right now. So I'm glad that I've been able to stay alive to show you uh, this set of colors now. Okay. One thing that I think might be maybe a little bit different or unique compared to a lot of the other examples of stuff like this that I've played uh, is the fact that we're controlling this with analog means by using the mouse to slide left and right along the screen instead of uh, what I feel like seems to be generally the standard which is to kind of have these little lanes that you shift back and forth with the arrow keys or something like this. Uh, in this case it's really like you just move wherever you want to move there's no snapping to anything uh, which can it can be good and bad. It can give you a greater feeling of granularity with the momentum. Uh, you feel like you're more in control of what you're doing. Uh, but at the same time, it's not like you can play it sort of like a robot the way you can with some other games where you just kind of... You very quickly visualize what leads to what action. And there we go. So that's a death. At first, amazingly enough, I made it to 3,455. Uh, but it's a big difference, though, being able to control exactly what you're doing versus having to just see a thing and then perform an operation. In this case, the operation is always flexible, it's always changeable, and a little bit less tangible. Uh, so we could upload our score or tweet about it if we choose. I'm going to opt not to do that in this case. I was a little disappointed that it seemed like we cycled through some similar color schemes several times over. And also, my apologies that I'm talking over the, uh, the voice of the robot that's narrating everything. It basically just tells us what to do, how to play the game, and then tells us what our score is at the end and tells us we can upload it and stuff. So, you know, I'm explaining all the stuff it is saying as well. Um, I'm also really, I'm enjoying the fact that the soundtrack feels just right for this type of momentum, this uh, this type of movement, for the setting and everything. It feels like it's all very cohesive. Uh, the one thing that I guess I was expecting to happen, and in my mind's eye, I guess I kind of imagine that this happens, even though it's not actually happening, is the buildings in the background feel kind of like spectralizers to me. It feels like, oh. That was terrible. Uh, it feels like they should be kind of correlating to the music, and the buildings that are popping up off in the far distance, I'm kind of almost expecting those to be doing that uh, in some level that corresponds with the beat. And, I mean, they kind of are by accident a lot of the time, but it's not like things are really pulsing the way that I think that this could all kind of wind up to be. If this turned out to be like a full-fledged game, I think that would be one of the most obvious decisions I would make, is make the, the movement of the surrounding areas correspond with the music quite directly. And uh, if you could even just, you know, have the tempo of the music uh, ratchet up somehow with the increasing of the speed that happens as you get through these checkpoints. Um, I could also imagine uh, there could be a few other variances and obstacles, but there's also kind of something really fun and simple about the fact that you kind of know what you're expecting every single time when you play it. Uh, there's not a lot of ambiguity uh, about what's going to happen further on. It's just going to be a faster version of this same thing. And in a way, you know, that it kind of really does purely test that one simple concept. 
And it's not too often that you see developers staying within those constraints, you know, to that extent. Uh, which, you know, for me, it means that you get a better chance to really demonstrate your skill at something as it gets more and more difficult. Like, even with Tetris, uh, it gets faster and it gets faster and gets faster and gets faster and does that for a long time. And then eventually, uh, you get to the point where it doesn't... It, I believe it starts adding, like, little fragmented bits of blocks to the bottom. Or at least maybe that was, uh, you know, the option that you had when you're starting up a new game. You could always add the, the chunks that make it harder to make uh, beginning lines or have to dig out first before you start things up. Uh, but just in general, for a Game Jam game, I felt that this was all of the things that I like to look for. It felt very polished, it felt like the gameplay is very simple and addictive, doesn't require much explanation at all, you know, in general, just feels like a very good time. So that's the kind of thing that when I run into it, I definitely want to give coverage to, uh, even if we've seen derivations of this... Wow, okay, I thought I was just slightly a little bit over... You know what might actually not be a bad idea? I mentioned the lanes before, even if we don't actually snap to the lanes, which I don't really want us to do, uh, like Boson X does it where you snap to the lanes, I want it to be where you can just kind of see the lanes and choose to go in them or not, just to give you a better visual idea of, uh, of where the delineation is from left to middle to right. I mean, it's all just kind of a pitch black highway as you go, right? And that kind of all starts to blend together a little bit. And also the fact that the guardrail along the side of it happens to be uh, the same exact pink as the uh, platforms that we're avoiding, or the obstacles that we're avoiding, and the background, uh, and some of the signs, well, it could be a little bit harder to read at certain points, at least in the first color scheme it was. But there's also an element of this where, you know, you'll just get better at it probably the more you play it, or uh, the more attuned you get to be to where your mouse should be to make a certain action happen. So even though we're not doing the left-right-middle thing, I think your head will still kind of adapt to that eventually, and your, your hand will start to kind of fall into the same groove. Uh, and you also have the benefit of the doubt of the hitbox being a little bit larger for the diamond, right? So you don't actually have to be completely in the center to grab it, which is kind of nice. I also kind of appreciate that the camera moves around with your character to give you a feeling like you're sort of leaning into the turn a little bit more. Maybe it just speaks to the fact that the momentum is such a strong thing here, uh, but that just feels right to me. If this was all just completely flat, I'd be like, what are we playing, Guitar Hero or something? I don't know. Not that that would be all that bad either. I'm quite a fan of Guitar Hero as well. Uh, but anyway, I mean, there's not a whole lot else to be said about Zyroid. I just wanted to cover it real quick, show you guys that it's a thing that exists, tell you you should go play it if you'd like, and uh, let you know that if you'd like to, feel free to chime in with your high scores. So I wouldn't mind having a little competition. Can you best me? Uh, my first and best score, of course, the one that you saw at the very beginning there. Can you get better than that? If you can, feel free to chime in. Probably you can, considering I've been talking over the whole thing. So if I concentrated a little harder, you know, there's a good chance that I'd be able to get a little better. Uh, but anything that's kind of along the same lines as, like, the Super Hexagon uh, formula just feels so good to me, and I just always enjoy finding new little versions of the same concept. So, you know, if you know anything, feel free to let me know in the comments there. Uh, we're going very, very fast, so it was about time that I ran into that. Was that a new high score? I know we made it to 3,000 before. I think it was 34 last time, but I, I have a terrible memory. Anyway, that's going to do it for another day's episode, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, consider leaving a like on it. There's going to be a link for this if you want to play it for free right in your browser. You can feel free to and uh, leave a comment, like I said. Come back again tomorrow. New episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day, so I look forward to bringing another one tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed it, and hope you have a fantastic night. I'll talk to you all later.